What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we'll be taking a look at a title called Demio. This is basically the best way I know how to describe this. If you've ever played like Hero Quest, or you've ever played like Warhammer Quest, or you've ever played any of those old school dungeon crawling games, uh, stuff like Gloomhaven, this is very much that kind of game. It's meant to be played online, but for expediency, we're not going to play it online today. Instead, the developers have generously, actually, I think this is a really, really good move, uh, what the developers have done is they've created a single-player skirmish mode where you can control all four of the characters yourself, and you can play it like a tabletop dungeon-crawling game, and the best part about that is that the single-player also unlocks things, the exact same things that playing multiplayer unlocks. And so anyways, we're going to dive on in today. We're going to take a look at this title and we're going to see if it's something that you want to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. I think this is a game that's for a very specific kind of gamer, people that enjoy stuff along the lines of Nemesis Lockdown, Warhammer Quest, uh, Gloomhaven, that kind of stuff. If you're into those sorts of games, this game will definitely be right up your alley and I'm happy to say that actually as far as board game conversions to a video game go, they've actually done a really, really good job with this game. It feels very, very good. It's got lots of little details that actually make it pop out from the normal kind of cash-in tabletop conversions that you see in the industry. In my opinion, I think that's a really, really good thing. So let's just jump on in and play the game. If after watching this, you wanted to get Demio for yourself, you can absolutely do that. Look down below in the description. I'll have a link for you. It's in like the 20 to 30 buck region right now, but the game does have a free demo that you can play right this second if you wanted to test it out, and so it seems to me the development team has made all the right decisions here. Uh, they've got a try before you buy option, they've got single player that unlocks new stuff uh, that you don't have to play multiplayer in order to go on into, so if you're looking for purely a single player experience, it does that. Lots of nice little things here. On top of that, down in the description, you'll also find a link to my Twitch stream, my Discord, all that kind of stuff, just in case you wanted to hang out live. Let's go ahead and play some Demio. Uh, so for right now, what you got to do at the beginning of the game is you got to decide on four or heroes that you want to take down into the dungeon. All of the heroes play very, very differently. They all have different mechanics. Uh, so for example, I haven't played the Barbarian yet, so I don't know exactly what he does. I have played the Guardian of the Realm, and she's got a mechanic called Armor. Uh, armor basically makes it so that she doesn't take damage so long as she's maintaining it, but it costs her AP in order to maintain her armor. And so you really want to use her as a bulwark that kind of stands in the way of the enemy and just soaks damage. You've got the wizard. It's exactly what's written on the tin. He shoots fireballs. He blasts lightning. He teleports people. He does things that a wizard would do. Uh, we've got the hunter of the woods. She is a combo here. So she's mostly a ranged attacker, but she also has a lot of abilities that have to do with either either AoE arrows, uh, summoning monsters and wolves and things like that to help you out and kind of give you a numerical advantage. Uh, things that can kind of like even the tide in your advantage. There's also Kai, the Assassin of the Shadows. Uh, Kai is kind of an interesting character. This is, a, this is a finesse character right here. So what Kai does is that Kai has stealth, but Kai is also very, very fragile and tends to get focus fired down very quickly because Kai is a threat. If Kai attacks from behind, that's Kai's special mechanic. You get backstab damage, and it turns Kai into kind of like a Hellraiser that's able to easily get in and annihilate enemies very, very quickly so long as the attack rolls come out in your favor. I haven't played the Bard yet, so I don't really know what he does. And then Awana takes, like, summoning up to, like, level 11. So basically, she's got a panther that follows her around, and all of her attacks make the panther do something else. And so thus far, I've played the game for about two hours, and I do think that all the characters are suitably diverse. I want to explore all of them. I want to learn how to play all of them uh, because it does seem like there's a learning curve to a lot of the characters. You got to kind of get like a feel for them and how they play. Let's kind of go melee heavy on this one. I want to try out the barbarian. I definitely want the wizard in the party. And then I want to take Kai, but I've taken Kai already and I've never tried out like the bard and I haven't really done a deep dive on Awana yet. Let's do Awana. That sounds good. And then you've got this very, very thematic. I like this a lot. Uh, you've got the role-playing kind of, I, I guess, uh, splat books that you get for various self-imposed adventures. They have these for D&D. &D. They have these for Pathfinder, where it's like all-inclusive. You don't have to have the DM design anything. And they've got the cool cover art. And, and they've got it's very, very immersive. I like it a lot, along with difficulty ratings. For right now, we'll go ahead and we'll go after the Black Sarcophagus. And the Black Sarcophagus, there's like some thing down in a dungeon that's causing all of the elves to get converted into ghouls. We got to go destroy it so that we can restore the elves back to their former glory. 
So here we are. Like I said, you're in a basement. It's kind of like the 1980s. The game has lots of cool thematic stuff like that. You can sort of leave the game board and look around the room, but they don't really make it super easy to do so. But I like that a lot. There's also kind of a narrator that talks about what's happening on screen while it happens. The game is fully voiced, which was a really, really nice detail. And so we've got to take our characters. Now, how does this game work? The game works very, very simply. In an online game, each player would be controlling one of these characters. In single player, you're controlling all of them, and you get two actions. You can use those actions for anything. There's no D&D style limitations on what you can do with those actions. Uh, you have abilities right here, or like equipment. Uh, these They're kind of interchangeable in this game. Abilities and equipment are all cards, and they have an AP cost. You have two AP per character. You can move twice. You can attack twice. Or you can play two cards. You can do whatever the hell you want in this game, and I actually kind of like that freedom. For now, all we really need to do is go down into the dungeon. So let's go ahead and get to it. There's no reason to really take like a whole bunch of turns right here in order to get things sorted out. Uh, the goal of the game, what are we trying to do? It's very, very simple in its premise. This is a game where somewhere on this battle map that we've been given, uh, there is a monster. That monster has a key. We need to kill that monster. Whoever gets the final hit on that monster will have the key up above them. And then the key bearer needs to find the stairwell, unlock it, and then you go down to the next floor. This game is comprised of three floors. Floors one and two are basically dungeon crawling hack and slash. You try to do it as fast and effectively as you possibly can. Whereas dungeon level three is going to have a boss on it and you've got to take out that boss. The bosses have varying mechanics. Uh, that make them differentiated from one another. They require sort of like, I guess, MMORPG raid-like strategies to take down. Uh, so the boss of this dungeon has sort of like an invulner uh, vul invulnerability mechanic that you've got to figure out how to weasel your way around. I would suggest saving lots of AoEs for it. Uh, but you take your turns in the order that we selected our characters. And so anyways, our Sigrun is going to go first. Uh, there is no real progression in this game. Your characters do not level up as you go down into the dungeon. Uh, you do get more cards and things, though, as you play the game. I'm going to step her on into the room, and it looks like this room is largely clear of anything that might be a problem. And it looks like this guy has a hook strike. It does 5 damage. It's got a range of 10. Okay, and it looks like it deals high damage and drains the enemy's health, so it heals him for three. That's actually pretty nice, because heals are sort of at a premium in this game. You don't get them very often. Did he not move? Huh, okay. Well, we'll move up and over to here. I'm not going to crack this door open just yet, but it is important to note that in this game, the enemies infinitely respawn. That's purposeful to put pressure on the player and keep them kind of like moving forward, and also so that the game doesn't kind of lose any of its difficulty. Selectivity on movement can sometimes be a little bit weird. That's one of the first things that I noticed, is that every now and again, the game doesn't seem to recognize the fact that you want to move one of your characters. Let's go ahead and bust this door open. And it looks like we've got a room with nothing in it. Man, my last adventure started out way more heated than this. These are bombs right here. If they're hit by anybody, they explode and deal a bunch of damage and have random effects on people. We just picked up a pile of gold. Uh, there's a vendor in between every single floor that will allow you to buy new equipment and new magic cards and new potions and things of that nature so that your characters develop and get stronger. I'm going to grab this chest right here. Chests, they give one item to every single character in the party. This is really, really nice because in online play, you don't have to worry about somebody running around with the rogue or a highly mobile character and vacuuming all the items basically in stealth while everybody else is fighting and contributing to the objective. It's universal. Uh, it doesn't matter who picks up the chest right here, everybody gets one item added to their inventory that they can use to get a little bit further on into the game. Let's go ahead and move everybody up and by the door over here. I do want to avoid... I do want to avoid that AoE by the door. You can hold down shift to bypass your turn if you don't want to spend any more AP and you like the positioning that you're currently in. Let's go ahead and open this thing up with the Barbarian and see what happens. Yeah, there's all the enemies. There they are. Uh, so we've got a whole bunch of bad guys in here. A lot, a lot of bad guys. We need to figure out how we want to deal with these bad guys. So we've got teleportation over here. It looks like we've got a hook strike that can go out pretty far and it jerks an enemy back towards us. These guys all have like 8 HP. Pretty tough. Uh, we can leap attack, huh? And that does an AoE. Might be worth it. Although that does isolate him very, very aggressively from the rest of the party. Still... If it does enough damage, it does 4 damage, 
So it'll kill that guy, it'll almost kill that guy, it'll take out the spider eggs, which frequently hatch and spawn spiderlings. It'll put a solid grip of damage on him. This guy uses an AoE, so I kind of want to spread my guys out the best I can. Let's go ahead and do it. Now, every single time you attack, you are going to have to roll a die. I believe this is a D12. Basically, on the D12, there's one side that's going to be cross swords. That means you crit, you get double damage. There's one side that has a skull. That means you miss. And so there is RNG involved in this game, if that's the kind of thing that annoys you as a player. So, for example, we just whiffed our first attack. I mean, we whiffed it, but he still kind of landed in the, the region. He's a little bit... Oh, wow. He wiped out the entire room with one jump. Good for you, man. That was kind of like an unintended consequence. Whenever you reveal enemies, I think it recycles your turn and lets you go again. Uh, every character has certain things inside their loadout that can be reused. So they're kind of like core abilities that you can use once per turn and then they recharge on the next turn. In the case of the wizard, it's called Zap and Overcharge. Overcharge allows you to use one of your APs in order to overcharge yourself, but it puts your Zap on cooldown. So basically you can zap for like no damage, but it'll stun the enemy or you can overcharge. And that means on the next turn, your zap is converted into like a lightning storm uh, that deals three damage. And then also AOE stuns everything in base adjacency to the thing that you hit. And so kind of like a risk reward mechanic right there. Do you want to spin up the minigun or do you want to fire one bullet uh, is generally kind of the, the pressing idea for the wizard. I'm going to take my wizard and move him over to here. I'm going to zap that guy because he is the danger. I call oh, there's water on the floor. I didn't even realize. So spells can interact. Uh, so if there's like gas in a room that's poisonous gas and you shoot a fireball in there, the poisonous gas will explode. If you've got water on the floor and you use a lightning spell on something that's adjacent to that water, the, wa the lightning will travel along the water hitting everything. Uh, something to keep in mind. There are like tactics and sort of like a prevailing meta to this game of things you need to be aware of, otherwise you're going to have a bad time. I'll move her into the room, and I think I will command... I'd like to do something, fire a magical projectile and tell Kana what to do. Yeah, let's do that. I don't know if I want to focus fire on this guy just yet, or if I want to take down the elven mystic. Let's take down the mystic, I guess, while we've got that stun keeping us covered. Our magic missile was successful. There you go. Grab that blueberry juice up out of the decanter and hit him with it. So there's one damage, and what you'll see is she's got a panther. It now spawns, and it's going to run at the thing that I just hit and hit it for one damage. The panther is really, really nice to have in my... Uh-oh. Okay, so the enemy used a teleportation ability in order to move... So she took and levitated that guy over into base contact with my mage, which is obviously bad for a number of reasons. Let's think about getting in right here and attacking. I need to put some DPS on this thing. Uh, we missed, unfortunately. That means I stabbed the kitty. I'm a terrible person. Uh, you are going to miss a lot in this game. You need to understand that while you're playing this game, nothing is guaranteed. Uh, things are going to go wrong things are not going to work out. It's just the way that this game plays, all right? Uh, my last run got totally torched by a bunch of misses at like a really bad time, and there wasn't much that I could do about that. It's just the way that it went down. Let's go ahead and we'll use Master's Call on this guy. I want the slime to go away. This slime is really dangerous if we don't deal with it. And so this guy is kind of the priority target uh, because he can spawn like little slimes and then the little slimes when they spawn... Uh, the little slimes can combine into even more big slimes. And so this guy is an issue. He needs to you. So we either need to stun lock him or we need to take him off the board about as quickly as possible. Otherwise, he's going to be a very large problem for us as time goes along. Our cat does drain health whenever she hits the enemy. That's also a nice feature of the cat. Let's continue striking over here. Hopefully we don't get too many misses. A crit would be really nice right about now, actually. I do wish that they had the ability to turn off the dice roll. Oh, we got a crit. Look at that. We fished it out. And so down goes the enemy slime. My barbarian is back in business, so we're just going to move him up and attack. The animations in this game are all very nicely appointed. They look good, in my opinion. And on top of that, there are little details. So, for example, if you watch my wizard as we play the game, they actually put in voice lines and they put in different casting animations for different spells that your characters can cast 
And what I noticed from my wizard is that, like, I cast a fireball spell, and he did a different chant than when he did his zap spell. And then I casted a ability that blocks off a chunk of the room with magical walls that come up out of the ground, and he said, like, I think a magic barrier will help. You know, like, they put in voice lines, and they put in animations for pretty much every possible ability that every character has. And that's a tremendous attention to detail. That's the kind of thing that I look for when it comes to games like this. Let's grab this chest over here. And it looks like we got a swiftness potion, we got a healing potion, we've got teleportation. So we got a couple of goodies inside of there, some light utilities. How do we find the guy with the key? Well, we find the guy with the key by going room to room, and these little blue marks right here are points of interest. You always want to be checking out points of interest if you can manage it. Uh, can I give the potion to you? There we go. You take you take the potion. We'll grab that gold right there. We'll kind of stack up on this door SWAT team style. The enemy will be vanquished. Actually, I guess you can crack it open. Most of my people don't have line of sight just in case they have ranged guys. It's another treasure chest and no key bearer. All right, fair. We're going to want to open up most of these doors and kind of look around to see if we can find this key. Sometimes it takes a really, really long time to find the key. Other times you find it reasonably quickly. It just sort of depends. It's kind of hard to predict. What I can tell you is the longer you stay inside the dungeon, the worse these things are going to go for you. Uh, you want to kind of, like, minimize your time spent crawling around if you can help it, because the enemies have no limit on how many of them there can be. They just keep spawning and keep spawning and keep spawning until eventually you're wading through absolute oceans of bad guys. It's not going to be too bad on this first floor right here, but by the time you get down to, like, the third floor, the respawning is going to be considerable. Oh, that's not great. Okay. Oh, the guy with the key is in there. Oh, good. He missed with his AoE. Little blessings, I guess. Didn't miss with that one. Definitely aced our cat. Luckily, the cat comes back in two turns, so it's not too tremendous of an issue. Uh, you come around this way and then attack right there, just because I want line of sight. I want to I want to be able to see what's going on. These little slimes right here, if you get too many of them in a room, they turn into a big slime. So we probably want to avoid that as well. You go ahead and I actually don't know. You've still got a little bit of armor left. We may be able to do something here. However, these fireball elementals are going to be an issue. We've got to do something about them. Because they are going to AoE the ever-loving hell out of us every chance that they get. Let's go for, you've got teleportation, that would put you into base contact over here. Let's start whittling away though at the enemy and hoping we get a good roll. Sometimes the camera work in the game can be a little bit sketchy. I've noticed it happens during rolls. Uh, every now and again it won't center the camera on the die, instead it'll center like way off to the left of the dungeon. Uh, I would like to see that changed. I would also actually like the ability to get rid of the dice roll entirely, where there's just a little text log over here, and it tells you what you rolled, and the animations are played much, much more rapidly. Uh, they could call it rapid fire mode if they want and make it toggleable, but like I looked through the options. That was like one of the first things I did was look through the options to see if I could turn off the dice rolling and just have the dice rolling be automated inside of a text log. Oh, cool. We leveled up. Uh, so this is your card meter. Every single time you deal damage or do anything, it fills up. It's basically supposed to represent leveling up. Um, when it hits 100, everybody gets an item as though you opened a chest uh, just to diversify what you have available. I do have a freeze spell. And I think a freeze spell might be of tremendous utility here. However, there's no guaranteeing we'll hit. Uh, but the freeze spell should stun all these guys for one turn. And it killed that one right there. The even bigger benefit is that frozen enemies, they take a ton of damage from random spells. I think you just get like a flat plus two when you hit somebody with a spell or an attack while they're frozen. So this should do three damage. Indeed it did. Very nice. Protect the uh, what we may want to do is we may want to move over to here. Piercing throw is pretty aggressive for right now, but we missed. It doesn't even matter. Oh, we missed, but it re so it spins your character like a like a game show wheel whenever you get a miss roll. 
And what happened right there is that it, the the spin randomly landed us on what we initially targeted. So no harm, no foul. That worked out okay. So he's got grappling hook that pulls foes to him. We do need to get rid of these spiders because I think they poison you. We are, however, out of freezing spells and stuns. And so I need at least one of these guys to get gone. Oh, they explode when they die. Beautiful. Okay, I was unaware of the fact that they explode when they die. Concerning. Did that guy just respawn inside of here? Sometimes the respawns can be a little bit close to your party. I think they can be spaced out a little bit better to make the flow of gameplay feel good. Uh, I've had enemies like respawn like five of them like right here while I'm trying to clear a concurrent room. Uh, I do think that the respawns should take into account like basically they should spawn one room further away before they bother you. Uh, but then again, the respawning is not exactly to my taste anyways, but I still think that this is a very, very high quality board game conversion. And so I wanted to show it off. Uh, we want to zap this guy so that we stun him. We got a crit right there. Yeah, he's going to make with the boom booms, which is a little bit of a bummer. But I'll grab the money over here. Hey, and Kitty's back. We are back in Kitty mode. For show. Uh, did it count that spell? I don't know if it did. I think it actually just used up my charge, maybe? I'm not super sure what happened right there. Uh, that guy should be targeted for right now. And I don't really have much else that I can do, so I'm just going to leave him to fight the cat while I scoop up money for the vendor on the in-between levels. Uh, the next thing that we're going to need to do is we need to find the stairs. Uh, the stairs are denoted like everything else in this game by a point of interest. Oh, we just got a whole bunch of oil lamps and stuff. That kind of sucks. I'll probably sell them all off. I was hoping we get something a little bit more valuable and utilitarian. Eh, well. Oh, he stepped in slime. I forgot there was a slime puddle right there and it just dealt damage to us. I will probably gift upon you my healing potion because why not? Let's move the entire party on into here. And we know for now that our exit is either there or there. Oh, monsters have come in through the back door. Beautiful. Oh, many monsters have come in through the back door. Concern. Okay, I'm going to want you to play Repair Armor. And then I'm going to want you to play Swiftness Potion. And I need you to catch up with everybody else. The wizard has the key on him. All right. Open this up and see what we see. Doesn't look like there's anything in here that we need to worry about. I am standing next to a bomb right now, though, which fills my heart with dread. Uh, we're going to line up right here, and hopefully nothing triggers that bomb. The AI in this game is smart enough to go after explosives and, and things of that nature uh, in order to really, really mess up your life, like, sincerely. Uh, it's a big problem when the enemy decides to start breaking explosive barrels and stuff. It can become a little bit of a headache. Uh, there's our door, actually. We are out of here if we can get the wizard to it. There we go. And so our first successful level. That actually went really, really well. My last run was like a slog. Like, my, I think it randomizes the dungeon on some level, even inside of the same storybook. Because the last time I played level one on this specific story, it was like a three-story complex. So there was like a square room in the middle. There was a second floor running around the outside rim. And there was a third floor on each of the opposite corners, basically. And there was like seven points of interest I had to check because of like the open air design of the dungeon. The enemy respawns were just like nonstop and it just turned into an unholy hellscape. Uh, the first level was very, very difficult the last time I played it. So it kind of surprised me how easy it was this time. But that randomization is appreciated because I think that adds a lot to the game. Now we are in Klepto's Bazaar. What it's going to do here is when you play online, each player gets like X amount of seconds to buy what they want. Um, I don't know exactly how it dictates who... I think everybody just has the same amount of gold or something. I don't know. I don't... I haven't really investigated the multiplayer too much, but I assume that it's... I assume that it's balanced in some way to keep one person from spending all the money on something. Uh, let's go ahead and I will take a piercing throw. That card will surely aid you. 
potions. Uh, once again, the voice acting in this game is quite good. Uh, a vitality potion would be nice. You've already got two healing potions, so let's just say ready. For my barbarian, he's got two healing potions. I'm going to get rid of the vortex lamp because I don't really have enough ranged options to really rely on my ability to lay down bombs and things. He can get a repeating ballista. That actually sounds rad as all hell. Uh, makes you invulnerable for three turns. Wow, that'd be a really good one too. Rejuvenation is an AoE heal that puts everybody up to max health. Varga's Retribution drain foes to amass bonus damage for future attacks. I mean, it's free. I'll give it a try. Why not? Uh, panic Powder is also a nice thing to have in your pocket, too, because basically it's a stun that you can throw on somebody at any given time. I've found that most of the items in this game, they may not all fit my playstyle, but they do all have utility on a certain level. My wizard is out of potions. I'll sell the oil lamp. Heaven's Fury is pretty good, but Heaven's Fury is also kind of random. Teleportation is also quite good for playing catch-up. I'll hold on to it. Magic Barrier can be nice for blocking off enemies, so maybe I'll take one of those. Yeah, I will take one of those. Uh, so Magic Barrier, very, very specific uses for it. But when you need it, you need it. Let's go ahead and we'll buy a health potion for each character. We will sell the water lamp. We will sell the vortex lamp. Yeah, everybody gets an equal amount of money from what I can tell. So I could have just loaded up on items right here had I wanted to. So that's how they divide it on out. Every single character has had a bunch of money to spend. Yep, that's how it works. Okay, that's good to know. That's actually really, really good balancing. It seems like they sort of designed this whole thing with the intent of avoiding sort of like trolling and people throwing games and acting like assholes, which when you're dealing with anything on the internet, I feel like that's actually a fairly safe bet uh, to just assume that some people are going to try to piss on everybody else's fun, and then there's not a whole lot that you can do about that. I, a bottle of light, causes poisonous chemical burns. Feral charge, I will take one of those. Pinch. I will take an astral barrier as well in case we go into like a room where there's lots and lots of guys spamming ranged attacks. And let's go to the next dungeon. Alright. Let's grab some gold while we're here. Step him into the next room, grab some gold. Where are my points of interest? Yeah, see, this is one of the ones with, like, the open design with multiple floors. And this is where it gets messy because the enemies like to stack up on these choke points. And then while you're dealing with the enemies that are stacked up on the choke points, you get people coming in from behind that are respawning in other rooms. And boy, it becomes a, it becomes a, a real, real headache. I, this game can go from 0 to 100 very, very quickly. Okay, let's crack this door open and see what we got here. Uh, the enemy is revealed, so we are now aware of them. I think if I can get a ranged attack on that ice lamp, we may be able to damage somebody. But it's hard to say who. She's got armor, so I'm going to put her in the room first. With my barb. How far can he throw that? Get the goblin chieftain. Very nice. That worked out kind of the way I wanted it to. I don't know if I want to move the wizard into this room. We've got enemies that I'm not familiar with. There are a lot of them. I think this may be a good time to overcharge. Uh, because I think the enemies are probably going to group up. And when they do that, having like a AoE ready to go that's going to stun all of them. Feels like a strong play to me. Feels like something that might work out. Uh, we do need this guy to die. Your wizard is capable of smacking a fool. He does like two damage. It's nothing like to write home about, but in the right situation, it can be helpful. Over here. Heaven's Fury is not a bad idea in this room, actually. Do that. Shake my bones and witness. <laughs> Hmm. 
Not too bad. It's random what that AoE hits. But I feel like we fished out some solid damage, so these guys are resoundingly softened up right now. And then we also managed to... Let's go ahead and hit you with that. Hopefully it doesn't miss. It did not miss, so that's good. At the bare minimum, if they don't want to get rid of the dice rolls, I would like to have an enableable... I would like to have a thing that I can enable that makes them auto-roll the dice the second you pick an ability. That would, I think, also be a nice little workaround. Ideally, for me personally, I'd like to skip the dice roll animation altogether and just have it automated and have the game play very, very rapid fire. But the ab Ow, five damage. Four damage. Man, there's some mayhem going on in here. All right, get your attack done. If you miss, you miss. Uh, you did not miss, though. So there's three damage out. Mend your armor to get your armor points back. And this is Demio. We're just about out of time for the uh, for the day. Uh, I think this game is actually really, really rad. Uh, I don't know that I would spend a huge amount of time playing it, just because I'm more of a Warhammer Quest guy, and I like the context of Warhammer Quest. However, that does not change the fact that this is a very, very well-designed board game conversion to digital format that actually tried to make a video game when it comes to presentation, and little details, and sound effects, and voicing, it's hard to find anything to really complain about inside this game. If you're a fan of things like Gloomhaven, if you're a fan of things like Nemesis Lockdown, if you're a fan of stuff like HeroQuest, this game is that, modernized and put into a digital format where you don't have to have all your friends over around a table. Instead, uh, you can all just play on the internet together or pick up a random group if that's what you really, really want to do. I'm actually really, really pleased with this game from what I've seen in the two hours that I've played. As far as progression goes, it seems to mostly be cosmetics uh, for like your dice and for your characters and things of that nature, but there are a lot of them. I'm just letting you know there's a lot of them. Like we can actually leave the game right now and we can go back to the progression menu right here. And there is a ton of stuff. Uh, you do get XP for runs in progress that you quit too, by the way. Uh, but anyways. I got the default dice right there when I started the game. I got a new outfit for the Paladin on my last game. It looks like we're getting a new dice skin right there. This one looks like a dice skin and like a trinket. I don't know what the trinkets do. I don't know what this little icon means right here because I haven't gotten that far. But anyways, there's like a gazillion levels of different things to unlock to make all the characters look different. Prestige outfits, stuff like that. And so you can go through all that right there. There's about 75 levels. And if this is actually, like, uh, successful... Gloves, huh? Oh, the gloves that sit on the edge of the table for the Dungeon Master. I was trying to think of where I saw gloves in the game. So there's glove skins as well for the Dungeon Master. I didn't show you the dungeon. It's just a disembodied set of floating hands like you're, the end of, like you're at the end of, like, Super Smash Brothers or something. But anyways, uh, well done, developers. This is actually what I would prefer to see for most of the beloved board games that I play, like Descent, Journeys in the Dark, uh, Runebound... Gloomhaven, uh, Warhammer Quest. This right here is the ideal conversion that I would like to see from all of those games. You've done a really, really good job with it. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had a little bit of Demio. Tomorrow we will have something else. Thank you for sharing your time with me. Hopefully this video was helpful in helping you decide whether or not you wanted to get this game for yourself or if it's up your alley. And I'll be back tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Bye, folks.